It's that weird reflective thing. Long planned, long delayed, and long awaited by a curious public, New York's 9-11 Museum at Ground Zero is finally about to open. It's taken nearly 13 years to transform Ground Zero from a hole through the heart of downtown Manhattan to an oak-shaded memorial plaza. Two square black voids mark where the Twin Towers once stood, and the museum's glass atrium nestles between them. When the keepers of New York's history saw those towers under attack, they knew that even as the rest of the city grieved and searched for what was lost, it would fall to them to preserve what remained. The first instinct, the first initiative was to save what we could and to preserve it in the State Museum. I, like many people, watched live on television when the second tower was hit and then we watched them collapse. I knew that day that we were going to get involved in this. I just knew it. It was too big an attack that happened in New York of such enormous worldwide significance that this, this, we were going to deal with the history of this in one way or another. In our minds at the time, we knew at some point there would be a museum at this site, that these objects would make their way back to this place of tragedy to tell a story of what happened there. More than 12,000 of those objects have made their way back to Ground Zero. 800 will now go on display in the vast underground space that has been chiseled out of Ground Zero itself. Overseeing their installation is the 9-11 Museum's chief curator, Jan Seidler Ramirez, who in 2001 was working for the New York Historical Society near Central Park. Honestly, my emotional feeling that day was as a New Yorker, as a parent, but this sort of began to shift quite dramatically by the afternoon when the husband of one of my colleagues who had been in Battery Park City that morning came in and took a paper dust mask that his doorman had given him to walk through this miasma and he put it on my desk and he said, there, you have your first artifact. Other New York institutions were also gathering artifacts. At the city's municipal archives, less than half a mile from Ground Zero, there are hundreds of thousands of papers and objects documenting New York's history going back 400 years. It's in underground storerooms down these marble staircases that the city keeps its 700 boxes of 9-11 material behind lock and key. In that first year, they asked us to preserve the flowers that had been presented to the families. And of course we did, sure, but none of us knew how to preserve flowers. So we, we called our mothers and asked them, how do you preserve flowers? Because our job is to preserve forever. Also preserved forever here are thousands of missing posters from the memorials and sidewalk vigils that sprang up in the days following 9-11. After the crowds went home, city officials quietly gathered up the material, as they did with the pictures and messages of grief on the seemingly never-ending wall of the missing in the help centre set up for relatives at Pier 94. All of this is now catalogued, archived and filed away for posterity. You're looking at pictures of children holding their parents and letters that say dear daddy, dear mommy, family celebrating life events and knowing that this little girl that's clinging onto her daddy or her mommy doesn't have them anymore so I can't even talk without, you know. I would cry and it was really embarrassing because people didn't really know why I'm crying. I would just step up to the bathroom and just start putting other boxes away. I mean, you cannot avoid crying when you work on, on the collection like that. It's, it's just overwhelming. I, all I remember about this is that very quickly you realized you could not think about what you were actually doing. Because each one of this, each, each item is a person and a family and you just, you couldn't think about that. Teaching the past through objects touched by history is a delicate task one that the New York State Museum in Albany had to do while the events of 9-11 were still raw in people's memories. Early days when people would come in and cry in the gallery and just to see the simplest object, within about five years, four to five years of the exhibition opening, uh, we started seeing this shift. It's this sort of transformation, the threshold from sort of the sacred to the historical. Some objects convey the scale of the attack, he said and others the suffering of one family or one person. A piece of steel, a crushed vehicle, is one experience of the force of the collapse and the power of destruction. And the complete other end of the spectrum is a missing poster, which has a human being looking back at you. Few are immune to such powerful emotions. Certainly not city officials more used to archiving records, 
blueprints and committee reports of generations past. Do you think you'll go to the museum when it's open? I keep thinking about it. Will I, will I not? I think just out of curiosity to see the finished product, I will, but I, I, I think it'll be hard. I think it's important for people to go, but I think you also, you have to be prepared for what's there. All these institutions have now supplied artefacts to the 9-11 Museum for its opening in mid-May, when it will become the latest addition to the newly transformed World Trade Center District. The museum's staff know that they are the custodians of priceless objects and painful memories, because for many, the 4,500 days that have passed since September the 11th, 2001, are not enough, still, to erase the memory of that one day. Anytime a family comes in and hands me or my colleagues something and says, this is all we got back. That's that moment where you realize what a profound trust these people are placing in the Memorial Museum to caretake the precious memory of that person. 